Around 40,000 years ago, the Grimaldi people, the first known Africans to reach Europe, made the journey. The Mediterranean world benefited from the information that African culture passed on as it developed. As the ideals and achievements of Egyptian culture were passed on to Greece and then to the rest of the Western world, this era marked the second stage of Africa's contribution to universal civilization. Greeks like Thales, who went to Egypt in the 6th century BC, learned a lot and then incorporated it into their own culture and language. Many people think of Africa as a backwards continent that has done nothing to further human civilization. All too often, people bring up the rendezvous of giving and receiving, as if to suggest that Africa has much more to prove before it can make a meaningful contribution to humanity, and that this will only happen in the latter stages of global civilization. But looking at it this way turns the clock backwards and changes the entire narrative. In actuality, the birthplace of every civilization began on the African continent. In this discussion, I'd like to focus on three distinct phases of its evolution. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. The idea that Africa is actually the birthplace of humanity is now commonly acknowledged, although this was not always the case. Around 30 years ago, it required a lot of intellectual guts to argue that Africa could actually be the cradle of humanity. The idea appeared completely out there. New evidence has emerged since then confirming that Africa is, in fact, the cradle of humankind. Some have even gone so far as to argue that the place where humanity began is constantly shifting from continent to continent, like a cradle on wheels. For grounds based on biblical tradition and appearances, it was originally placed in Asia. Black, white, and yellow people all originated in Asia, which was also considered the cradle of humanity according to biblical tradition. Marcel Yule and other early archaeologists dug in Mesopotamia to prove that events like the Asian flood really happened, in an effort to prove that the Bible was accurate. Even though the Pithecanthropus fossils were small, they were sufficient to conclude that Asia was the site of the human cradle. While initial focus was on Asia, it soon became clear that Africa should be considered the jumping-off place. This was not an entirely novel concept. Darwin himself had proposed that Africa might be the home of the first humans. Fossils and other artifacts unearthed in African digs have long since dispelled any doubts. Our species originated in Africa. The cradle remained in Africa after its placement. It is becoming more and more clear that Africa is where humans originated from with each passing day of new findings in prehistory and prehistoric archaeology. Africa gave birth to six protohumans, or early human specimens. Although not all of these early humans can be accurately described as human, let's pretend for the purpose of argument that six distinct kinds of people descended from that area. New evidence suggests that none of the earliest three hominins, Australopithecus robustus, Australopithecus gracilis, and Homo habilis, had the genetic flexibility to leave Africa. But the other three did leave the continent and settle in other parts of the world. Three hominin species departed from Africa, Homo erectus, the first to appear on the continent about two million years ago, Homo neanderthalensis, most often known as the Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens, the modern human. It was from Africa that these three distinct early human populations spread out over the globe. For example, some 1.7 million years ago, Homo erectus probably started migrating out of Africa. Two primary ways out were the Strait of Gibraltar and the Sinai Peninsula via the Isthmus of Suez. The earliest people to settle in what is now South Africa, which includes the countries of Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania, followed these pathways. These were the routes that the first humans took as they left Africa. A little over two and a half million years ago, Homo erectus left Africa. Homo sapiens, the modern human race, first departed from Africa around 40,000 years ago and began migrating into Europe, primarily via France and Spain. The emergence of distinct racial groups can be traced back to the processes of migration and adaption to new habitats. Because great physical differentiation was not required by the African climate, racial diversity probably would not have arisen had humans stayed in Africa. During the last Ice Age, which lasted over 100,000 years, these physical characteristics started to change when Homo sapiens migrated into Europe. Lighter skin tone evolved gradually over around 20,000 years as a result of evolutionary changes spurred by Europe's harsh environmental conditions. It was around 40,000 years ago that the Grimaldi people were the first known Africans to set foot in Europe. Until the first light-skinned people, the cro emerged about 20,000 years ago, they remained in Europe and evolved. The Chaldeans, who came into existence in the early Paleolithic era some 15,000 years later, are often thought of as the ancestors of the Yellow Race. There were blacks, whites, 
and yellows during the last glacial period. Initially hailing from Western Europe, the black race eventually made its way to what is now Russia, via areas such as the Don Basin and Crimea, to Lake Baikal. According to archaeological evidence, the Negroid people existed 32,000 years ago. They started to diverge as they moved. Around 15,000 years ago, the same people that lived in Europe made their way across the Bering Strait to settle in the Americas. Despite the wide variety of temperatures in the Americas, no fossils of Homo erectus or Australopithecus have been discovered there, suggesting that only later hominin species made the journey to the Americas. This finding lends credence to the theory that all humans descended from a common ancestor. Once we pass through the prehistoric era, we reach the historical age, where writing first appeared. The globe was once again trailing behind Africa, and more especially Egypt. A writing system was established by the Nile Valley culture in the 4th millennium BCE. The Egyptians had set up a sidereal calendar that tracked when the star Sirius rose by 3,236 BCE. The importance of Africa's BCE. involvement in human the history that and the interdependence of the human cultures every 1, can be better appreciated when we take the time to learn the about the foundation for your system of timekeeping. I feel compelled to stress these geometry points regarding prehistoric Africa, mechanics, and Neanderthals were most likely arrived in Europe between 100,000 and 150,000 years ago. In. After Homo During erectus the rule of Pharaoh arrived Joser, about 400,000 years ago, the renowned scholar our modern-day ancestors, who the Greeks the Homo sapiens worship the sapiens, sapiens, made important from Africa in about 40,000 years ago and slowly Thales, made their way across Pythagoras, Europe. And Plato from its inception, were among the Greek subsequent migration and settlement picked up knowledge about quantum mathematics and this science. This is essentially the story of how humanity came to be. Although the Greeks made some adjustments to these ideas over time, it is clear that they originated in Africa. in Africa. Greeks are Greeks frequently said to have been the first scientists in the West, the but in reality, steady environment many of, of the ideas not said to have originated difference. with the Greeks the actually came from African cultures. The dispersal of Homo sapiens sapiens from in Africa, mostly Africa into has Europe, made significant some 40,000 years ago, sparked racial diversity. Sparked racial diversity. The These continents were pivotal in the development of early human culture and scientific ideas, where they survived the last worm glaciation, which lasted for almost 100,000 years and was characterized by severe cold and harsh weather. Variations in climate 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 Variations Varieties of race emerged as a result of evolutionary changes prompted by unique environmental stresses in Europe. The first humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, who appeared in Africa around 120,000 years ago were invariably of Negroid appearance. Prehistoric East African circumstances, around the latitude of Kenya, required highly pigmented creatures to shield themselves from ultraviolet light. Melanin protected the organism and extended its lifespan by acting as a protective covering. This clarifies the reason behind the darker skin tone of early people born in Africa. These ancient people adapted to their new home as they made their way to Europe, despite the many challenges they faced. Lighter skin tones became the norm as a result of these changes. It is believed that this shift happened over the course of about 20,000 years. Around 40,000 years ago, the Grimaldi people, the first known Africans to reach Europe, made the journey. Until the initial appearance of the cro a race of lighter-skinned humans, about 20,000 years ago, they stayed put and evolved. A distinct humanoid species did not appear for another 15,000 years. This one is thought to have been the Chancellade Man, an ancestor of the so-called Yellow Race of the early Paleolithic. During the Worm Glaciation, there were three major racial groups, Black, White, and Yellow. Black people, the first known racial group, traversed all of modern-day Europe some 32,000 years ago, beginning in Western Europe and ending at Lake Baikal via places like the Don Basin and Crimea. There was one homogeneous human race that spread across these areas, according to archaeological data. This human race was of Negroid ancestry. Their migration coincided with the beginning of their categorization. Around 15,000 years ago, this same species of human crossed the Bering Strait and settled in the Americas. Ancestral migration to the Americas is consistent with a common ancestor for all humans. From Tierra del Fuego to Alaska, the Americas cover a vast array of climate zones, but unfortunately, neither Homo erectus or Australopithecus fossils have been discovered there. That early people didn't leave Africa until much later is supported by this lack. For instance, while Homo erectus did roam the globe after emerging from Africa, it never made it to the Americas. So although it may have appeared unlikely at first, prehistoric archaeology has proven the monogenic theory which states that humans have a single ancestor. Natural selection may have produced distinct human populations in different parts of the world, according to the polycentric idea. Archaeological data does not lend credence to this notion, and it is exceedingly doubtful that nature would repeat its evolutionary cycle. Consistent with scientific data, 
The monogenic theory describes the real course of human evolution. By coming to terms with this reality, we admit that the rest of the world's population descended from those in Africa, and that this happened by complete chance. Those who departed from Africa did not go without anything. They took their newly acquired knowledge and technological advancements with them. As an example, Europe benefited from the Aurignacian Nation industry's transmission of advanced stone tool technology from the Grimaldi people. When the first people showed up, they brought with them innovative cultural and technological practices that helped them survive in the harsh, uncharted environment. The invention of writing signified the beginning of recorded history as humanity moved from prehistory to history. Again, Africa was in the forefront, this time with the Nile Valley civilization falling far behind the pack for a number of reasons. At that time, Europe was only beginning to emerge from the Long Worm Glaciation, which began at 10,000 BCE and lasted for over 100,000 years. Africa, in contrast to Europe, where many people still lived in caves, had more regular climatic cycles throughout this time, with dry and wet periods that enabled more steady cultural and technological progress. Hence, Africa was the first continent to join the historical period. Africans had already created writing by the time the 4th millennium BCE came to a close. Documents dating back to about 3300 BCE provide light on the development of African civilizations, with a focus on the Nile Valley. Even as early as 4236 BCE, Africans were using the rising of Sirius, the sky's brightest star in the Canis Major constellation, to construct a sidereal calendar. The Egyptians built their calendar around the fact that every 1,460 years, Sirius would rise with the sun. It is a testament to the sophisticated astronomical understanding of the period that the Egyptian calendar was so precise. The star rose at the same exact latitude as the sun once every 1,460 years, as they had noticed. A accurate method of keeping time that could account for inconsistencies throughout time was born out of this insight. To keep things accurate, they understood, for instance, that the yearly alignment shifted by approximately one quarter of a day every year and that modifications were required every four years. All the necessary components of Egyptian civilization were in place by the time of Pharaoh Djoser in the Old Kingdom, which lasted from about 2778 BCE. Numerous branches of science and technology, such as mathematics, engineering, architecture and medicine, were areas in which the Egyptians achieved remarkable success. Imhotep, the renowned polymath who the Greeks came to worship, had a major impact on architecture during this period with the building of the Steppe Pyramid. When compared to Mesopotamian methods, Egyptian mathematics, and geometry in particular, were very advanced. For instance, 